this week's market update. All eyes are on today's US midterm elections. Oil investors shrug off Iranian sanctions, confusion over the trade outlook and a steady flow of blue chip results announcements in the UK. The midterm elections in America are often the trigger for a strong period for US shares. That's because a clearing of political uncertainty tends to go hand in hand with a fiscal boost to the economy as the president starts to look towards re-election in two years time. This year might look a bit different for a couple of reasons. First, because Christmas came early in this presidential cycle as far as tax policy is concerned, Donald Trump's tax cuts this year brought forward the usual year three boost by 12 months. Second, because the most likely outcome of the election is a Democrat win in the House of Representatives and a Republican hold in the Senate. This promises policy gridlock and tied hands for a president who, whatever his shortcomings in other areas, has generally been seen as a positive for the stock market. If the most likely scenario does play out, and the odds are three to one that it will, then markets may struggle to regain momentum after the October wobble, as fiscal stimulus starts to wane against a backdrop of continuing monetary tightening from the Federal Reserve. The more interesting outcomes from a market perspective would be clean sweeps by either the Republicans or the Democrats. If one or other party does gain control of both houses of Congress, then the door opens for more decisive policy making. A Republican sweep would probably be seen as good news for markets as it would make more fiscal stimulus tax reform 2.0 it's being called, more likely. Ditto deregulation, which would help financials in particular. A Democrat sweep is a harder call from a market perspective. It could be unsettling if it made impeachment of the president over his alleged Russian connections more likely. It could, on the other hand, be a good thing if the president's infrastructure spending plans received a bigger welcome from a Democrat House. On trade policy, it's not clear that any changes in Congress would make a huge difference, as the White House holds considerable power over policy in this area. The market is struggling to get a hold of the outlook for trade tensions, latching onto every hint from the president or his counterparts in China. At the end of last week, soothing words from Trump helped the mood, but President Xi's comments at the beginning of this week undid the good work. Tensions remain high. Politics remains a key driver of markets at the moment, with a range of developments pointing to clear economic and financial consequences. In Iran, for example, the extension of sanctions to cover the all-important oil sector has cast a shadow over the energy world. The reimposition of sanctions following the US's withdrawal from an international nuclear deal with Tehran dating back to 2015 has threatened to limit global oil supplies and push the price of crude higher. In practice, Oil has come off its recent highs of more than $85 a barrel, as investors have assumed that other countries like Saudi Arabia will be able to plug any shortfall. Meanwhile, European governments are looking for ways around the US squeeze, such as setting up a special purpose vehicle to safeguard their trade with Iran without prompting a backlash from Washington. Oil is hovering on the cusp of a price range which starts to crimp global economic activity which means it's in everyone's interest, including the main suppliers, to keep prices from spiralling higher. While a higher price sounds like good news for producing countries, if it leads to a serious slowdown, then it might prove to be a hollow victory in the medium to longer term. At the current $72 or $73 a barrel, Brent is pretty much in the middle of its range for the past year. Now, another country where politics has started to take on greater importance is Japan, Last week's announcement by Prime Minister Shinzo Abe of an easing in immigration curbs may well be a long-term game-changer for a country which is famously unwelcoming to foreign workers. That's a big problem for a country which is also ageing fast. By the middle of the century, Japan's population may well have fallen by around a third from 120 million to about 80 million, thanks to a reduction to below natural replacement for its birth rate since the 1970s. Immigration represents at least a partial solution, but it's been resisted so far, which makes the move to encourage construction, farming and health care workers a political move with very real economic and market implications. Japan is also in the spotlight this week because of comments from its central bank governor Haruhiko Kuroda, 
pointing to an end to years of massive monetary stimulus in Japan to boost its stubbornly low inflation rate. Kuroda said that that phase was now over, suggesting that Japan will be less out of step with other central banks, which are either already tightening policy like the Fed or edging that way in the case of the Bank of England and ECB. Japan has, of course, been here before, and it will be keen not to repeat the errors of the past when it's taken the foot off the monetary accelerator too quickly and sent the economy back into a deflationary slump. With a rise in Japan's consumption tax to 10% due next year, it will be particularly wary of slamming the brakes on prematurely. Meanwhile, back at home, the next few days promise a steady stream of big name company results. Retail is in the spotlight today with William Morrison and Primark owner Associated British Foods reporting, followed by Marks and Spencer tomorrow and Burberry, Sainsbury's and Halfords on Thursday. The struggling housing market will be in focus today with numbers from Purple Bricks, an online estate agent, and AstraZeneca, the pharmaceuticals giant, builds on last week's numbers from GlaxoSmithKline. Investors will be hoping to avoid confirmation on the corporate front of this week's UK service sector activity data, which showed the biggest part of the UK economy growing at its slowest rate since the bad weather at the start of the year. Last week, the Chancellor painted an upbeat picture of the British economy, but growth remained slow and evidence is mounting that Brexit-related uncertainty and a slowdown in global growth are reducing demand for business services in areas like accountancy, law and advertising. Thank you.